All right, so you're ready to accept online orders. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to install the plugin so you can start importing your inventory and begin accepting online orders. So, so what you would do is if you have a WordPress website, you just simply go to your website. At the very end, put WP login or admin like this. And once you do that, press enter. Okay, and then simply log in with the username and password. Okay, once you log into the back end of your website, simply go to plugins right here. See where it says um, plugins? Press add new. And then see where it says search plugins? Type in Clover. In the first result, you'll see right here online orders for Clover. Press install now. Give it a few seconds and it'll be it'll start installing. Once installed, you will see it on the left-hand side of your dashboard. So, I'm uh, sorry, press activate. Once you press activate, you'll see it on the left-hand side of your dashboard. And it is right, it's, let's see if it's there yet. Oh, it's still activating. See, it's loading right here. Give it a few seconds. Sometimes uh, it'll take a little bit longer to load. There you go. Now it's, now it's done. See here it says Clover orders right here. Okay, go to settings. From here, you will put your API key. Remember, the API key, if you go to um, clover.com, open up Smart Online Order, you'll get the API key. Just open it, it'll say, here's your API key. So just paste and copy and paste it here. Okay, once you paste it, copy and paste your API key, you'll be showing your address. Just confirm your address is correct. You can zoom out, just make sure it's in the right location. Usually is, yes. so just press Save Changes. Awesome, okay. Now let's go to import inventory. This is important because you want to import your inventory to your website. So what you would do first is update modifiers. Press this button one time. Modifiers updated. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to do this section. I meant to do import inventory. Sorry, this is after you imported the first time. So do this button here. I got so used to doing manual sync afterwards. Um, you know, when changes are made that I skip this first step. So again, do this step first. For first time, do this one first. See how it says all your data is imported? Now it'll reboot itself. Let me refresh itself. Okay, manual sync is also good, but start with this option. And then later on, when you make changes to your inventory, then do a manual sync. So just go from here to here to here. Clean inventory, pretty, um, pretty self-explanatory here. If you delete a lot of stuff or make changes and remove the items, to do a clean inventory. Manual sync is good if you updated pricing or may change to your pricing, but if you deleted lots of stuff, use this. Manual sync will still remove old items, but if you made lots of changes, then use this option. Okay, now that we've done that, you'll have two brand new order types. We have online order delivery, online order pickup. <clears throat> if you are accepting, if you are doing delivery, just leave it the way it is. If you're not, press edit and disable it like that. But in this scenario, we'll go ahead and leave it there. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and go to delivery areas and fees. Since we since we are doing delivery, we're gonna go ahead at our at our delivery. Press add zone. We'll call it zone one. You can give it a name you like. Delivery radius. We'll say five miles. Minimum order. <clears throat> we'll, <clears throat> we'll put minimum order for five bucks. Delivery fee. We'll put a dollar. So once you press draw zone, a zone will be created around your location. Okay, and then after you draw your zone, press validate selected zone. But let me actually do 10 miles, maybe maybe five miles too small. Let's do 10 miles, draw zone. There's my zone 10 mile radius. And you can look at it if you wanna zoom in. So it goes all the way to here. Anybody that out orders outside this area won't be able to order. Press validate selected zone. Oh, sorry, it says, still says five miles. Let me update that. Uh, zone one, let me just delete this one, start over. Actually, let me just leave it as five miles. Um, that way, if you need to change it, feel free to go back in here. This is how you change it. Just go here, press delete or press edit, and then just change it, okay? But if you wanna change the zone, you'll have to delete it. So let me just do that for you, delete it. Let's just start over again because um, I wanted to put 10 miles, but actually put five miles. Delivery orders, add zone, I'll call it um, 
uh, zone A, 10 miles, minute order, five bucks, delivery fee, dollar, draw zone. Again, feel free to change it later. See how it says 10 miles now? Now we got to correct. Press this button to validate it. Free delivery, you can say it's free delivery if they order over 50 bucks. That's up to you. Fixed delivery amount. Don't put anything here because it will override this zone. Only if, only put a fixed delivery fee if you're not drawing the zone and you're delivering everywhere. Okay, so leave this uh, blank if you are if you only want them to order within this area. Okay, other zone delivery fees. If you if somebody actually somebody orders from this area here or this area or this area, any basically any area outside the zone, you can say you will, you charge five dollars to deliver way out there. If you don't want to deliver to the outside area, leave a blank so it doesn't allow them to order. Press save changes. You can change your delivery charge name here as well. All right, so now where pages are created, go to store settings, uh, put your email address here. Okay, put the, you can put up to seven emails, sorry, up to five email addresses. So we got one email so far. Track stock, uh, most restaurants leave it disabled, so leave that disabled. Business hours, remember it's very important to add your business hours on Clover. Let's see if you have, let's see if this particular the business hours added. See, it says close, close, close. So make sure to go to clover.com, set up app, business information, add your business hours, okay? Or else your customer is going to be able to order outside your business hours. And then uh, turn this on, allow schedule order when the store is closed, and allow customers to schedule their orders. This is optional, but I'd rather have it off. Let people see your menu even while you're closed. That way they know what they want to order next time. Uh, how long it takes for you to prepare your food? Most restaurants it takes about needs about 20 minutes. If you if you need more than 20 minutes to prepare the food, just change to 40 or 50 or 30. But minute we'll leave it, we'll leave it as default. How long do you need to deliver the food? Most restaurants are 60 minutes, 45 minutes, so you can change that. Days in the future. What this means is, let's say today's Monday, and you want you you want to allow your customers to order all the way up until Thursday. So. If it's Monday, they can choose up to Thursday to order food. If you don't want them to do that, just change to one day or put zero days. That means they have to choose the same day. That's optional. You can change that. These are default. Leave it the way it is. It tells you where's your order page, where's your checkout page, where's your cart page. See, it shows, you can cho uh, choose from the options here. All right. Save changes. Okay, let's do checkout settings next. I'm just basically going from uh, most important to least important. Checkout settings very fairly important. Uh, if you want, if you don't want to accept pay in store, turn this off. Pay in store means uh, your customers uh, can pay while while they pick up the food. So uh, that's up to you. I'll leave it on for now. Pay upon delivery. Let's say your delivery driver delivers the food, then he can he can collect cash payment or a check upon delivery. That's optional. If you want them to pay with credit card beforehand, turn this off. It's like that. If you want them to pay with a credit card beforehand, turn this off for pickup as well. For now, we'll leave it both uh, uh, with the option or availability to pay in store or pay upon delivery. Secure checkout page. If you have a padlock like this, that means you have SSL on your website. See, it's signed. It's done. So all you do is turn this off. You don't need to. You, know, you don't need a secure checkout page because you already have it. Again, you, st you can still use it, but it's not required now because you have your SSL. Coupon codes. If you want to create coupon codes, press enable and then go to here and then make your coupons. Clover orders, coupons. For now, we'll leave it disabled. Service charge. If you're doing catering or something that requires service charge, you can do 5% here for. And again, this applies to all orders. So you can do $5 for all orders or you can do 5% for all orders by selecting percent. Again, this is optional, okay? I'm not going to charge a service charge. Okay. But you can if you want to, though. Tips enabled. Most restaurants are recommend enabling tips. It's a good idea. Your customers get a pop-up at the end of the checkout. Ask them if they want to add any tips. So take advantage of that. Special instructions. What that is is uh, when they check out, they can say, please ex add extra napkins, extra tomatoes, extra sauce. You can give them the option. Thank you, Paige. When your customers order online, they will be shown a screen that says thank you for the order and it will give the page, link to the receipt. If you want a completely different thank you page, put the link here. Remember, it has to include a complete URL, okay? But by default, let's leave it the way it is. 
save changes. And then uh, let's go to the other importance level, which would be store interface. This one, no pictures can be added. This one, can pictures uh, can be added. This one, pictures can be added for items only, not categories. This one is pictures for items and categories. This one is also pictures for items and categories. This one is for pictures and categories, but no description. So each one, ha each one has their advantages. So feel free to play around with it, the one you like. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go with this one. I like these two the best, but you can go with any other one you like. And I'm going to press Save Changes. Uh, categories and items, self-explanatory. If you want seafood at the top, just drag it to the top. If you want um, pasta at the top, just drag it to the top. If you want to hide seafood, just hide it. It won't show on the website now because you're hiding it. If you want to know what's inside this seafood category, press the plus sign. All of this stuff is inside this category. If you don't want fish platter to be the top, just put fish platter at the bottom. If you want uh, shrimp at the top, move it to the top. Again, it's so easy to reorder. Just drag and drop. If you don't want this name, you don't like wings and tenders, but you want to call it something else, press edit and change the name. If you want to add an image to this, just press this camera icon, but make sure you select the appropriate store interface so it shows the category image. Okay, very good. If you don't want to show a kids menu, just hide it. Um, let's go to the next option, modifier groups. Here's all your modifier groups. If you want your customers to choose drink first, put drink at the top. If you want them to choose flavors first, put flavors at the top. Again, reorder it. If, if they choose the modifier group called extras, but you want them to choose shrimp first, then put shrimp at the top. Again, just simply drag and drop. Okay, and that's how you do your modifiers. And the notepad, I mean, sorry, you can edit the name. Okay, and uh, let's see what else there is. We've got deliveries done, store interface done, order types done. Feedback help, you can send us email. Or click on this link here. This is really help, uh, helpful. Click on this link. It will show you all the documentation on how to do various changes. Or again, just search, search the other videos on YouTube for all of additional information. Uh, we pretty much try to cover every feature uh, possible using YouTube. So search YouTube for other videos. Okay. And uh, reports, coupons, orders. is Once you get your order history established, you'll show it here. It'll show it here. Okay. Let me see if I can uh, show you one other thing. Let's go to the website here. Actually, this is coming soon, so we'll let the business. Uh, we'll let uh, we'll let you uh, make it. We'll let you remove the coming soon because uh, uh, you know you know best when it, when you want to go live. But when you do go live, just do this: appearance, menus. Add the order online page to your menu. See right here, order online. Add to menu. There it is. Okay, uh, you can put that right here. I think. So home menu order online. Once they click on this, they will start ordering. And then all you do is remove your coming soon page. Remember, not not everybody has a coming soon page, but if you do have one, just disable it when you are ready to go live. Okay. Your order online page has been set up and you are good to go. Remember to set up your printer, uh, search YouTube to set up your callover printer and it will show you how to do that. Thank you for your time. Have a good day.